do not follow the words of maybe the most trusted entities you know out there and definitely the CEOs of those trusted entities. I want to show you guys two examples of what was said and what the reality is now. Okay, when it comes to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin as well as a part of that. Okay, so let's dive right in here and let's take a look. And I thought this was such a great little split screen that somebody did here on Twitter. Shout out to Florian.verse for what I've seen here. But Google is obviously the largest search engine in the world. One of the most, maybe not trusted, but respected entities out there, at least from a from a corporate standpoint. And look, we use Google, you know, ad nauseum, everything. I mean, it became even a verb, right? Just Google it. So when you look here in 2018, it says Google will ban all cryptocurrency related advertising. Now, funny enough, we're talking about two trusted sources here, right? It's Google, but that's also being reported by CNBC. Now, maybe you don't follow them, but vast majority of the world definitely thinks of these two as a trusted source for their news. So when you read this in their tech uh, you know, category here that Google will ban all cryptocurrency related advertising. This is 2018. This isn't like, you know, it was 2002 or 2004. This is literally four years ago. Okay. Four and a half years ago. And here we are in 2022 where we're talking about Google select. So same, same CNBC trusted source, same category of tech. And now this comes out that Google selects Coinbase to take cloud payments with cryptocurrencies and will use its, meaning Coinbase's custody tool. All right, what, what does that even mean? So we, we know, you know, uh, companies will use Google for cloud storage and all kinds of things. And so now they're willing to actually use Coinbase as the middleman to facilitate users paying in cryptocurrencies. So instead of using their US dollars or whatever, what have you, credit cards, they can actually pay with cryptocurrencies for that. And they're actually going to use Coinbase for the custody tool. So the, the Coinbase will actually hold the assets, the crypto assets for Google. But that's interesting, right? Because you gotta remember here, these types of companies that are this large, I mean, while it's four and a half years apart in terms of the reporting, they don't usually do things that quickly. So this isn't like something Google thought of last week and now decides that, hey, we should take cryptocurrencies for payment and it happens to roll out. It's usually something that's happening behind the scenes for quite some time. So it just goes to show you that what is said publicly and then what they end up working on down the road, especially when it comes to emerging technology, like don't follow just what mass media is reporting or what big companies will put out as a statement. Okay. Now, to be fair, I will say this, that they had time for the crypto industry to mature a little bit. It still has a long way to go, but it is maturing and, and, and maybe they saw the advantages through that maturation stage or process. Fair enough. But putting things out there like this from CNBC is banning all cryptocurrency related. And then all of a sudden, you know, four years later, probably more like two and a half years later from all the works that were going behind the scenes, they come out with they're taking payments. So not to be trusted on that end. All right. And. I want to go now to JP Morgan, our friends at JP Morgan, the Kanye West killers here uh, that said, get, get lost, right? And so 2017 here, the CEO of JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon said, I would fire a trader in a second for trading Bitcoin. Okay. So JP Morgan, trusted financial institution, shouldn't be really, but it is. And then we have the head of that financial institution, uh, institution JP Morgan who is a very well respected individual has status and clout and all that kind of stuff and authority he comes out and just fires out say hey I'm I would fire any trader you know that that is is tied to us for trading bitcoin right crazy pretty strong stance okay pretty strong stance and then if you skip to 2022 he's still telling congress that look I think bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency crypto tokens like Bitcoin are decentralized Ponzi schemes. Okay, which is interesting, right? Because he made a point to say decentralized Ponzi scheme. So centralized Ponzi scheme would be perhaps a US dollar. I mean, they print it. No problem. They want people to pay for things. So it makes more money. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, the financial institutions, to some degree, are centralized Ponzi schemes. But anyways, I'm not going to go go deep into that. But it's interesting that 
he would still call this out. Uh, he's gone on to say that I'm a major skeptic on crypto token, crypto token tokens, which you call currency like Bitcoin. They are a decentralized Ponzi scheme. And he's like, and the notion that it's good for anybody is unbelievable. So here's the interesting fact, right? One of the most powerful figures in the financial institution who has nothing to gain from a decentralized token, meaning you and I can own our own financial assets. Where do you think his opinion would lie? Is it more on the side of, I think crypto is good, meaning you can own your own assets and you don't need us? Or I think it's Ponzi scheme, it's useless because I and my company don't benefit from it. Interesting to think about that, right? And so he's talking about, you know, billions of dollars are lost each year through crypto linking, uh, through crypto linking cryptocurrencies to crime such as ransomware payments, money laundering, blah, blah, blah. He said crypto is dangerous. We don't talk about the US dollar and how much that facilitates crime. We don't talk about how much JP Morgan themselves get slapped with fines for doing things that are against the law. Otherwise, they don't get fined. I mean, come on. This is now just laughable what's, what's being said about this stuff, okay? So well, here's the funny part, right? That there's no intrinsic value for crypto. None of that. But here's what I say about watch what they do and not what they say. So one, why would JP Morgan create its own coin? JPM coin. Uh, wait, hold on. So the head of JP Morgan says that crypto tokens are useless no intrinsic value are used for scams decentralized ponzi scheme like pretty much every negative label you can put on crypto tokens he's done it and yet jp morgan came out with their own jp morgan coin that's interesting wait they have a lounge in the metaverse well that's interesting i don't know how that works they now allow traders to or they allow their 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 clients access to cryptocurrencies so he goes on to say, you know, it's not for me to say yay or nay on cryptos for my clients. It's what they want. But if you think it's such a fraud, if you think there's no value, you would really allow your clients to be able to purchase them through you? That's, that's interesting, right? I mean, for someone who speaks so strongly on it, to allow your clients to buy into something that you think is a scam, uh, that JP Morgan is a reflection of Jamie Dimon maybe vice versa as well so to allow them your clients to buy things that you think are a scam is crazy to me so you know look I, I just wanted to highlight this aspect that what is being reported what has been said always changes or is not what is entire or is not happening the way you think it is and hopefully you see that already but when it comes to cryptocurrencies it's that much more it's that much more deceptive because you will get those in position of power condemning it left, right, and center. And, you know, obviously the biggest reason is they don't benefit from you having anything decentralized. The whole point of centralized is they are involved, right? So when that happens, one, they don't benefit, but two, they're finding a way to benefit from it. So you don't think Jamie Dimon sets up this middleman type of uh, atmosphere for its clients because it can gain some fees. The main reason why they are against cryptocurrencies is because they haven't figured out how to benefit from it, profit from it. And that's what they're trying to do. So I wanted to highlight that. If you haven't seen the video of where I talk about Kanye and JP Morgan uh, or JP Morgan pushing Kanye out, which is an unprecedented move as a client, go check the video out right here. It'll highlight our friends at JP Morgan once again. See you guys in the next video.